So hey guys, we got you here today. We just got our brand new UR10E and our machine tending kit from Roboteek. We got this mainly because we've just become a UR certified integrator. And uh, this is gonna be our demo robot. But in the meantime, until we do some demos, we're gonna go ahead and set this up for a production job on our TL1 lathe here. Uh, my guys have been running this machine for about three or four months now, and so they'll be happy to get this, this up and going. But in the meantime, the reason we've got you here is we're also shooting a video series for Roboteague showing you step-by-step -step integration of the UR with this Haas machine. So we're going to go all the way from unboxing to full production, uh, and you'll see every step in between. So here, we're about to cut this open and get it mounted on the stand. So we got our, our dual gripper machine tend to get here. This is going to help us because we can pick a finished part and place an unmachined part at the same time without having to go back and, and grab something off the table. Let's see what we've got. So here we have our pendant armor. It saved me several times. Here we have our complete machine tending kit from Roboteek. You can see we have two hand e-grippers. They're splayed at 45 degrees and they're gonna, one's gonna be for picking raw material, the other one's gonna be for picking finished parts out the machine. Now the fun part. All right, guys, it's time to cut this thing open and get it mounted on the stand. Oh, that's the controller box first. I love the smell of a fresh controller in the morning. I just, I don't get why you can't put your boots in the box. That makes no sense. <laughs> All right guys, and now for the fun box, we've got our actual UR10. I always recommend saving these boxes in case the robot ever has to be transported or shipped back to UR. It's just a good way to ship them. We made our own robot stand because we wanted it mobile. We, we thought we'd be moving the robot around a lot more than we actually do. So what you're seeing here is a piece of two inch steel plate. The steel plate alone is almost 400 pounds. We built it heavy so you can move the robot at full speed and not have the stand shake around. Uh, looking back, honestly, I would go ahead and take the extra effort and bolt the stand to the ground. I, even though this is super heavy, I've had people come by and stand on it and move it. It's just the best way to go. If you look at the top here, you can see the bolt pattern. Um, I think UR recommends you use 10 millimeter bolts. We're using 5, 16, 18. And notice the two uh, locating pins so that the robot always goes back into the exact same spot if you happen to take it off. All right guys, so we're about to throw this robot up on the stand real quick. You can absolutely do it by yourself. It's pretty heavy, it's only four bolts. You can kind of balance it up there and get one started, but I always recommend you have someone help you. It's a, it's a lot of money to be balancing with one arm. Casey, you mind giving me a hand real quick? I got you. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and move the, the robot arm away from the base so we can get the gripper mounted. So we left off last time where we, Casey and I were mounting the grippers to our brand new UR10E. Since then, we went ahead and finished the installation. We went ahead and mounted our camera cable, routed it all the way back down the arm to our control box, as well as installed both UR caps and set our TCP and center of gravity for both of the grippers. To find this information, we went on Roboteek's e-learning platform where it's clearly outlined exactly how to do those things. I know we said that we were gonna shoot this process from unboxing all the way to finished automation. However, after seeing that e-learning platform, there was really no point in reinventing the wheel. I highly recommend you go check it out if you're 
If you're mounting this stuff up, they did a wonderful job with it. So the next step is we're gonna take you over to the lathe and show you the, our manual process first and then talk about how we're gonna automate that. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out part two of this series where we continue our UR integration.